Lord Ram coming to Siddhashram. Sage Vishwamitra came to Ayodhya and brought Ram, Sri Ram and Lakshman to Siddhashram because he was performing some special yajna. And the Demonus Tataka, her two children, Subahu and Maricha, they were disturbing Vishwamitra's yajna. Vishwamitra had taken the oath of not getting angry. Number one. Number two, he was doing mauna brath, especially when the yajna was going on. So Vishwamitra is very powerful, capable sage. By giving sharp curse, he could have immediately controlled those demons. But because of these two reasons, he was unable to do so. And uh, so he wanted the help of Lord Sri Ram. With heavy heart, Dasharat Maharaj sends Sri Ram. Vasista also approves. He says, please send. It will be good for Sri Ram. So they come on the way. They hear the story of the many uh, other places, they hear the story of who is Tataka, why she is disturbing everyone, all those things. And what is Siddhashrama? What is the speciality that Vamana Deva appeared in that place and all these things. And once the Yajna started, Lord Ram kills Subahu and throws Maricha far away. And Maricha comes and falls at the place where today it is called Gokarna. So that is a place where Maricha comes and falls. And uh, how Vishwamitra, he gives so many Astras and Shastras. Bala, Atibala, Chakra, Danda, Gada. Like this we heard so many Astra Shastras were given to Sri Ram before he killed these Rakshasas. So now the Rakshas Vad happened and uh, sages are all very happy that Yajna is successfully completed. Right? So they are all sitting and they are requesting Vishwamitra that please we should give such a gift to Lord Sri Ram. He's so sweet, he's so nice. He came all the way from Ayodhya. He came to our ashram, Siddhashram. He gave us darshan. He killed Rakshasas. Helped us complete our yajna. So we must give him very special gift. They said, why don't we take Lord Ram, Sri Ram to Mithila. We take him there, Mithila and we will give him the special blessing that is getting him married to Sita who is there in Mithila. So now Vishwamitra, so he desires to take Sri Ram and Lakshman to Mithila. So he calls Sri Ram and Lakshman, Lord Ramachandra and Lakshman and, and tell, he tells them that I am going to Mithila. There Janak Maharaj is doing Dhanur Yajna, bow sacrifice. There is a very great bow, Dhanur. That is Shiva Dhanus, right? So that Shiva Dhanus is very extraordinary. So do you like to come and participate with me? And immediately Lord Ramachandra says, yes, yes, I like. I like coming. I like traveling with you. I want to come and explore more places. In this way, he actually agrees to go with Vishwamitra. So now, on the way to Mithila, Vishwamitra narrates so many histories from the Puranas. Because Lord Ramachandra asks so many questions. He asks so many questions. What is this Ganga river? How the Ganga Devi appeared? 
on this earth earthly planet who brought it the story of sagara chakravarti lord rama's ancestor sagara and his 60000 children how they dug up the earth and finally it became the ocean right and many things like that so very fascinating history of ganga avatarana finally bhagiratha bringing ganga devi to this mother earth and juhnu rishi when ganga devi is coming she floods the place and juhnu rishi's ashram gets flooded and he becomes so angry and uh, he takes the entire ganga devi and he drinks the whole river water we all drink one glass of water or maybe little one full bottle of water but juhnu rishi he got so angry he took entire that river and he drank then bhagiratha was was in great shock thousands of years i did tapasya and with so many challenges we brought ganga devi to mother earth and now this juhnu rishi he drank what to do so he offered prayers to juhnu rishi and finally juhnu rishi allowed ganga devi to come out from his ears so because of that she got the name jahnavi because she came out from juhnu rishi and she is considered as a daughter of juhnu so she's name is jahnavi like that so this is a story of ganga how she came ganga avatarana because bhagiratha brought her so she also got the name bhagirathi like this all that story the vishwamitra tells uh, lord ram and then kartikeya a story of kartikeya that also they narrate all those things while hearing hearing lord ram is traveling to mithila and when they almost reach the outskirts of mithila they come across a city called vishala nagara there's a huge nice place called vishala nagara and this vishala nagara the king who was ruling that place was called sumati the king sumati this king sumati is also from the same ikshvaku dynasty is an another branch of ikshvaku dynasty ikshvaku is a king he will have many children the raja will have many children so one of the prominent the chain is in the ayodhya so he is another branch their children were there, there staying there <clears throat> and they had a special blessings from uh, from ikshvaku raja the special blessing was the kings in that dynasty they will have long life like this king sumati he had been living since thousands of years so like that and uh, sumati the king sumati receives vishwamitra ram lakshman gives great hospitality and vishwamitra says we will stay overnight and uh, vishwamitra gives the history of who is raja sumati and their family all that details and uh, uh, you know all that information and then the king sumati asks who are these two children who are these two boys they look so uh, like they look like lion they look like vrishabha they look like bulls they look like tiger they look so great heroes who are these two boys and then vishwamitra tells them they are the sons of maharaj dasharath you remember he says you all had come for putra kameshti yagna when raja dasharath did putra kameshti yagna he this uh, sumati the king sumati also had come so that same raja dasharath he had got now children these are children and sumati the king sumati receives them so well happily takes care of them and gives very nice hospitality they stay overnight and next day they again continue their travel as they reach the outskirts of mithila city mithilapura they behold the beautiful magnificent a great virtuous city from far off they are on the top of the hill vishwamitra ram lakshman and other sages and they are seeing the mithila city it is looking so glorious so great big city they say look at that sadhu sadhu 
Valmiki Ramayana says, wow, wow, what a great city, what a great city. You know, sometimes when you go by flight from the sky, when you look down, sometimes there are big mega cities and you get a wow experience. So like that from the top of the mountain, when they saw Mithila city, they felt, wow, what a great city. Not simply because, you know, construction and the buildings and all that. That place had become extraordinarily great place because Mahalakshmi Devi had appeared as Sita and she was present at that time in that place. The place becomes great, special because of the special people living there. Not simply because of some road and buildings and bridge and all that. So because Mahalakshmi was present there as Sita Devi, the place was glowing, it was effulgent, it was all attractive. Like Krishna is all attractive. Shadaishwarya Sampanna, like that Mahalakshmi Devi is also all attractive. So the place had become very nice, attractive. And not only that, the great King Janak Maharaj, he was celebrated as Raja Rishi, very great king. He was living there personally. So because of all these things, the place was a very special place and it was looking very attractive. And Vishwamitra, they all said, oh, look at that Mithila city. So nice, so special. We are going there like that. So as they were walking, they were walking. At that time, interestingly, Lord Ram, he came across a place. So <clears throat> he saw a place uh, and he said, he said, Mithilo Upavane Shunya Mashramam. Mithilo Upavane, closer to Mithila city, outskirts of the Mithila city. Upavane, a forest was there nearby. Shunya Ashramam. Lord Ram saw a nice ashrama, but nobody was there. It was vacant. No human beings were visible in that place. Drishya Raghava. Raghava, Lord Ram, he saw a beautiful ashram, but it was deserted. No human beings were there, outskirts of Mithila city. Puranam, from, by the look you can make out, this ashram is a very ancient ashram. Very old, from the old time, thousands of years of time, this ashram has been existing. Puranam, Nirjanam, no human beings. Ramyam, but it was very beautiful and enchanting. Papracha Munipungavam. So, Lord Ram asked Vishwamitra, which is this ashram? It's so beautiful, so enchanting, looks so ancient and old. But nobody is there. Why? Beautiful place. Generally, so many people go. And it's an ashram. Generally, many people come. So, which is this place? Srimad Ashrama Sankasham Kinchidam Munirvarjitam. Oh, my dear sage Vishwamitra, why this place has been deserted? Why no one is there? Gnatam Ichami. I wish to know. I desire to know the reason behind this. He says, please tell me about this place. And now Vishwamitra replies, Hantate Kathaishyami Shrunutatve Naragava. Hantate Kathaishyami. Vishwamitra became very happy, excited. When Lord Ramachandra asked this question, this made Vishwamitra very happy, excited. It made Vishwamitra filled with wonder, Ascharya Chakit. Oh. Lord Ram wants to know about this place. He is happy, excited and is full of wonder in such, a, in a, for such an uh, uh, experience. In Sanskrit, he used the word hanta. Hanta means with a lot of excitement, with happiness. Vishwamitra is saying, Kata Ishyami, I will tell you, I will explain. Shunume, listen to me, oh Ramachandra, I will explain to you. Tatvena Raghava, but very carefully, you should hear. Very carefully, truthfully, you should hear. Not assumption, no loose conclusion, 
no improper judgment very carefully tatvena truthfully as it is you should hear you see now we are going to discuss about a very important personality a very important topic from where we can learn lot of lessons in our life that is the story of ahalya devi she is considered as one of the greatest pativratas one of the greatest pativratas it's about her it's the ashram of the gautama rishi gautama ahalya husband and wife so that discussion is going to come so vishwamitra is saying tatvena shrunu raghava carefully here truthfully here no loose talking see the the way our vedic literature present certain topics when it comes to talk about a woman her life her character vishwamitra is being very sensitive and careful tatvena raghava carefully listen and truthfully listen it is not a rumor it is not gossip it is not for some 5 minutes excitement enjoyment i speak something about somebody loosely talk about somebody when you talk about a woman ahalya tatvena tatvah sanskrit tatva has lot of heavy weightage tatva means truth no lies no gossip no assumption no fake news no tatvena carefully truthfully listen right he says hantate kataishyami shrunu tatvena raghava yasyade ashrama padam shaptam kopana atmanah yes you're you're right this is an ashram in this place gautama rishi out of anger he cursed his wife ahalya this is the place he said so who is this ahalya devi why she was cursed by her husband gautama rishi so that is uh, something that we have to very carefully understand because valmiki ramayana is saying you should carefully understand right so and uh, that is something that we have to pay attention so in the uttara kanda valmiki ramayana there is a brahma indra samvada their lord brahma speak about who is his ahalya in detail so we will hear about it from valmiki ramayana uttara kanda amarendra maya bahvya praja srishta sthatah prabho ekavarna samabhasha ekarupascha sarvashah so lord brahma said once upon a time i created similar looking women i created similar looking women not only they were ekarupah ekarupah means they were looking all were looking similar you can't differentiate them they were all looking similar samabhasha they were also talking in the same way ekavarnah same color same complexion same type of the body same type of the bodily feature they were looking alike like twins triplets you know like that so bahu i i had created many such women lord brahma said and then he said tasam nasti bishosho hi darshane and then i felt there's nothing special in this they're all looking alike they're looking same so i wanted something special lord brahma is saying darshane lakshane api va तथो तथो हम एकाग्र मन सह सो ब्रह्म सेड तथो एकाग्र मन सह विथ फुल फोकस विथ फुल कॉन्सेंट्रेशन विथ ऑल माई अटेंशन नाउ आई स्टार्टेड मेकिंग ए न्यू क्रिएशन आई वॉन्ट टू क्रिएट ए न्यू वुमेन नाउ राइट एकाग्र मन सह विथ फुल अटेंशन विथ यू नो वेर पीपल से दैट full pay attention and do your work that means you give your best so brahma said with all my 100% with all my best attention 
now i started now making creating a new woman tato maya roopa gunair ahalya stri now i created a new stri and what is the speciality of her he said that uh, soham tasam visheshartham striyamekam vinirmame yadrasya janam pratagyam vishishtam taduttamam next he says tato maya roopa gunair ahalya stri vinirmita this stri this woman she had extraordinary beauty roopa and not just roopa lord brahma is saying along with roopa beauty she had gunaha all the good qualities so we have to understand there are two types of people beautiful people not necessary they have good qualities but they are beautiful they are good looking they are attractive not necessary they have good qualities but lord brahma is saying i created a lady i created a lady who is extraordinarily beautiful and also she was filled with extraordinary qualities roopa gunaihi so many people don't know this they simply think okay good looking is enough they think that good looking is enough either man or woman oh okay good looking person sometimes they will see the photo ha huh, good looking person i'm okay okay so you are not seeing the qualities guna and the scripture say gunaha the qualities actually reflect your original beauty like for example cuckoo bird cuckoo bird coo coo it makes sound right the quality the guna of that bird is to make such a sweet melodious sound but the color of that bird may not be so good isn't it so like that the qualities are more important and again in the in the mahabharata tatpari nirnaya shila madvacharya explains that the ordinary beauty can be because of your karma okay you have got some good karma so you can be beautiful but if it is not a natural beauty then you will not have good qualities like shurparnaka she also had this ability of changing her form a rakshasi form to a good looking form like nowadays there is this uh, beautician course or beauty parlor place for both men and women so you can go there you can you can become beautiful but unfortunately you cannot get qualities you cannot get guna but you can make your face look more attractive you can you can make your body look attractive you can make your body look beautiful but guna will not be there another example is you you may have a beautiful flower a plastic flower it looks very beautiful looks like the real flower means it is beautiful flower but it will not have fragrance fragrance is the quality finally which is the one which attracts us a fragrant flower not just the flower a plastic flower paper flower is also beautiful but it doesn't have that smell it doesn't have the fragrance so you won't get attracted that is why those flowers which do not have fragrance we do not offer to the lord like hibiscus flower it is not offered to the lord because it doesn't have any flavor fragrance so like that brahma said i created such a woman such a stri not only she was extraordinarily beautiful she was also endowed with extraordinary qualities that combination of a roopa guna makes it a very rare thing in this world so in sanskrit the word halya hala hala means deformity or something uh, ugly kurupa or ugly is called hala halya means something which is born out of that uh bad ugly looking uh something deformed like that 
so because this woman was filled with real beauty with real good qualities lord brahma said i gave a i gave name called ahalya a means not not bad qualities not ugly looking but she is most good looking with most auspicious qualities so lord brahma he is saying that samayanyasa bhuta tu he is saying that tvam tu shakrata danarim jani she manasa prabho he is saying that she was so beautiful that even devatas were thinking oh how nice if he can get to marry that kind of a woman right not simply good looking good looking with good qualities all the social media we see today it can maximum show us good looking if you if you are not good looking they will also tell you some filters are there you can put filters and you can become good looking now artificial intelligence has come they will tell you you can reach size your you know face they can enlarge your eyes you can reduce the size of your eyes you can make your chin cheekbones and you know shape of the face so many things you can make and finally make it good looking yes you can make it good looking there are plastic surgery right they can make good looking but can they give good qualities good qualities is swabhavika naturally should be there in that atma beauty can be there for both the people good people bad people but where the good looking with good qualities are there such a person is called real beautiful person and that's why brahma gave the name ahalya ahalya means most beautiful woman with beautiful qualities which are natural to her she's not a bad woman she's got all good women good qualities and she was such an attractive woman devadas especially even indra king of heaven swargadipati the most powerful one the most richest one the king of all the devatas he felt i should marry this woman ahalya you can just think i should marry indra is thinking tvam tu shakra tada narim janishe manasa o shakra shakra is another name of indra o indra even you desire to marry her right sthanadhikataya patni mamai shaiti purandara you thought i am the king of the devatas i deserve to marry her like that even indra was thinking but brahma knew who should marry ahalya so what he did he said samayanya sabhuta tu gautamasya he brought her to the ashram of gautama rishi where this lord rama asked no, what is this place and all that so that is a place where gautama rishi had built one ashram for himself this is where in the himalay present today you, you know himalay where himalayan mountains are there very beautiful place attractive enchanting place so gautama rishi had his ashram and he was doing his tapasya adhyayana and all that and uh, devatas used to visit to spend time with gautama even lord brahma used to visit that gautama rishi's ashram it was a very extraordinary place so lord brahma brought ahalya to this gautama rishi's ashram and he told gautama rishi see i have a most beautiful uh, filled with all good qualities uh, daughter she is my daughter and i want her to be here in your ashram for some time so you please take care of her so uh, brahma ji lord brahma he kept ahalya devi in the ashram of gautam and he went away to satyaloka his place for many many years and gautam rishi is a young man is a rishi is doing tapasya most beautiful woman is there in his ashram so the ramayana valmiki ramayana says here tatastasya parignaya mahasthairyam mahamune this mahamuni gautama with mahasthairya with so much of self control he was taking care of ahalya not even once he got an idea in his mind oh beautiful girl is there maybe i should 
somehow influencer somehow impressor somehow i should marry her no mahasthairya mahamuni such a great muni he was actually lord brahma was demonstrating the whole world the greatness of gautama rishi you see the most beautiful women ahalya i have left her in the ashram of gautama rishi and i have come and not even once he is getting a thought in his mind that somehow if i can get to uh, you know uh, have good time with ahalya no not even once and it is not like a uh, half an hour five minutes like that gnyatva tapasi siddhim cha patyartam sparshita tada he next he says dharmaatman gatva tasya ashramam muni दृष्ट्वा वाश्च तदाताम स्त्रीं दृष्ट्वा सीन दिस गुड बिहेवियर ग्रेट बिहेवियर ऑफ गौतम ऋषि महात्मा धर्मात्मा नेवर डीविएटेड फ्रॉम द धर्म ही फॉलोड धर्म नेवर बिहेव लूजली नेवर डीविएटेड बिकेम यू नो लूज लेट लूज हिज माइंड नो सो ब्रह्म डिसाइडेड टू मैरी अहल्या विद गौतम सो Brahma ji said I will marry my daughter Ahalya to Gautam Rishi so he married so Ahalya married to Gautam Rishi but this made Indra very upset so Indra was thinking I am the most suitable husband to such a nice woman she is so good looking she has got all good qualities she deserves to marry me but lord brahma married her to gautam rishi but indra cannot do anything because lord brahma he has taken the decision lord brahma is the supreme final decision maker no one can challenge him so indra had to keep quiet and even devadas became upset are we thought we will marry her at least our king indra will marry but uh, finally that gautam rishi got married to ahalya so like this you know this marriage didn't go well with many people so they were all little upset that we didn't get chance to marry ahalya devi like this so in this way uh, when uh, gautam rishi and ahalya they were doing tapasya living happily in their ashram one day indra he desired he was always thinking somehow i should get ahalya i should enjoy her she is so beautiful so like that indra was thinking there are many other technical reasons if the time permits we will discuss definitely not today in the next session the, we should understand that's why vishwamitra said tatvena shun shun tatvena ragava there are a lot of technical truths are involved in this we should not now think see indra is very loose behavior person you see how he is desiring that uh, he wants to enjoy ahalya what is this that is why the disclaimer is given in the beginning we are going to discuss about great people they are not some ordinary people indra is not at all an ordinary person he is a very very great very elevated compared to we, we can't compare ourselves with indra in terms of his greatness whether in uh, in terms of his spirituality in terms of his the, for the capacity to follow dharma his capacity power position we are not even fraction compared to indra that is why we have to have this disclaimer we are going to discuss about great people right there are many reasons why such incidents happen so we have to pay attention and hear it so indra he thought that uh, okay i wish to enjoy ahalya so what he did one day in the early morning when gautama rishi he got up early in the morning he goes to nearby river to do his uh, ahnika so that time indra takes the form of gautama rishi and comes to ashram so he comes he enters into ashram he approaches ahalya and he proposes her and he says that i want to copulate with you then ahalya says what is this just now you got up you went to take bath it's brahma mohurta time and uh, you you're doing ahnika my husband doesn't behave like this he doesn't he doesn't uh, express himself in this way in this manner at this time 
so she immediately recognizes that the one who has come is devaraj indra she recognized even though he was in the form of gautama rishi he was looking like gautama rishi with his as uh, devata shakti indra has changed his form he has come in the form of gautama rishi he is approaching ahalya he is saying that no come just now you have finished your rutu snana we should not waste this time so i want to uh, associate with you and then ahalya recognized it is indra who has come now ahalya is again disclaimer we are talking about great people she is one of the pativrata shiromani greatest wife that the history has ever seen very great committed great woman virtuous woman that is why her name is ahalya right already we discussed that not only good looking she also has got good qualities but when indra came and approached like this she came under the moment of weakness she felt special about herself she said for me the king of heaven has come the king of heaven has come how special i am and she knew this that many devatas have desire to marry me so she it is valmiki ramayana says devaraja kautuhalam she had this curiosity what it means to mix with devatas i know my husband is rishi gautama rishi what it means to enjoy with the devatas that kautuhala that curiosity was also there in her secondly that element of i am special especially that somebody is giving me special attention exclusive special attention this is a greatest disease which becomes the foundation for many mistakes like this all of us fall prey to this problem we want to have this some special feeling exclusive attention what is that you should make me feel special we expect this from everyone oh you are treating me like anyone else you should make me feel special so she felt that uh, indra is treating her special see that indra has come for my sake he has come for my sake hiding in the far, taking risk in the form of my husband for me why should he come that to indra he has got so many apsaras in swarga loka it is not that he is an ordinary person so that made her feel special so in the material world this is how many people fall trap into many material relationship they suddenly feel they are they have got some special attention from somebody somebody start paying attention to them and they feel start feeling good about it oh for me this person has done this somebody will say actually you know for you i brought this if i tell for everybody i brought you will not feel good but if you say for you i have brought this you feel that special feeling <coughs> right let's say you come late and uh, say sorry i came late no no prabhu ji for you i will wait no problem oh for me you wait <laughs> wait for me okay so you you make feel special that means with others you get upset but for me you are ready to wait you know so this is all exclusive attention special attention or somebody will come and say for you i made on special item take this this is all called exclusive special attention if you are not careful this can trap you which trapped ahalya that's the lesson that they are all teaching us so many people come to you maybe for so many reasons especially if you are a devotee if you are a sadhu like she is a pativrata shiromani she should be careful why do i need ex- exclusive attention of another man why i need i don't need whatever attention i want my husband should give but she started liking that extra attention that devraj indra was giving this is the cause of the fall down 
somebody sometimes some people say you never appreciate me you see that person appreciates me you never told me you never made me feel special you see the neighbors are coming and appreciating me oh so nicely you are cooking so nicely you are singing so nicely you are doing you don't make me feel special somebody else makes me feel special this somebody else making you feel special is the whole problem in this whole incident that we are discussing you are doing everything nice everything is going great you are such a great person pati vrata shiromani somebody like indra is coming and telling you oh you are so beautiful you are so nice i have come for you i want to enjoy with you then you feel oh this person has taken so much difficulty for me i am so special otherwise why should somebody take so much extra effort for me isn't it so ahalya felt like that. and she knows he is not my husband and even then she is mixing with him even then she is mixing and then after that entire thing over she is telling right uh she i'm just repeating those uh, words <clears throat> she says athabravit narashreshtha kritarte nantaratmanah ओ नरश्रेष्ठ इंद्र कृतार्थात्मन आई एम वेरी सैटिस्फाइड विथ यू लुक एट दिस अहल्य स्पीकिंग आई एम वेरी सैटिस्फाइड विथ यू शी से देन शी से कृतास्मी सुरश्रेष्ठ शी नो शी इज अड्रेसिंग यू मैज सुरश्रेष्ठ सुरा मीन्स देवताज एंड ई इज द बेस्ट अमांग द देवताज इन द सुरश्रेष्ठ गच्छ शीघ्रमति प्रभो गच्छ प्लीज गो शीघ्र गो फास्ट i am happy i am very satisfied with you you made me very happy and satisfied gacham shigram ita prabho please go fast atmanam maam cha devesha sarvada raksha gautamat please go fast and protect me from gautama if gautam comes gautama rishi my husband comes it will be problem for everyone you also save yourself and save me also go fast go fast she is telling so then indra indrastu prahasan vakya mahalya midam abravit smiling indra he said sushroni paritushtosmi gamishyami yathagatam oh i am also very happy with you ahalya yes yes i am going so like this eva sangam yathutvaya nischakramota jatata स समावृतर तन राम शंकतो गौतम प्रति सो ही जस्ट केम आउट ऑफ दि आश्रम एंड गौतम ऋषि के सो देर आर टू गौतम वन गौतम ऋषि हुज एंट्रिंग द आश्रम वन गौतम ऋषि हुज एक्सिटिंग फ्रॉम द आश्रम सो गौतम ऋषि सरे हु इज दिस पर्सन आई एम ह्यूर द रियल गौतम एंड विच इज दिस गौतम ऋषि कमिंग आउट ऑफ माई आश्रम सो गौतम ऋषि शॉक्ट to see this person imposter right gautamam tu dadarshartha pravishantam mahamunim devadanava durdursham tapobala samanvitam with this tapobala he understood who is this person who has come indra he also understood what for what purpose he has come what he has done and what methodology is used to do this he became so angry right and uh, he said drishtva surapati strasto vivarna vadano bhavat when indra who was in the form of uh, gautam rishi he is a gautam rishi actually coming vivarna his face became very scared you know when you get caught when you get caught red handed they say range hath pakad liya <laughs> so indra was caught red handed by none other than you may okay if someone else come it is different he is in the gautama's form and the actual gautama has come <laughs> such an embarrassment right so drishtva surapati trastah his face became very disturbed his uh, his face became like pale lost all the charm and color अथ दृष्ट सहस्राक्ष मुनिवेशधर मुनि मुनिवेशधर सहस्राक्ष 
the sahasraksh is another name of indra munivesha dhara he is come in the vesha the form wearing this uh, disguised as gautama rishi dirvrattam vrata sampanno rosha dvachanam abravi rosha he became gautama rishi became so angry rosha vachanam abravi he spoke he said that mama roopam samasthaya krutavanasi durmate mama roopam you come in my form you come you are taken my shape my form mama roopam samasthaya krutavanasi durmate o oh, wicked minded person indra with with the wicked intention with wrong purpose by taking my form my shape you come akartya vidam and you you committed what you are not supposed to do you come and destroyed my family i am living peacefully with my wife and you have come and you have spoiled and you have destroyed my family he said that akartya vidam akartham it is not supposed to be done who will do like this you have done it what you have done is so bad so wrong so he said that uh, you become impotent he cursed indra you become impotent i curse you that you become impotent you are so arrogant you are thinking that oh i am so great such a big you know i am that uh, alpha male i think i can do whatever i want that's how you thought that i can go and approach any woman in this world and with that mentality you came you approached my wife i curse you that right now you become impotent immediately the gautama rishi's curse worked and indra was shocked what happened what is going on right tata shapta savai chakra mahalyam api shaptava actually gautama rishi gave three shapa first thing he said indra you will become impotent second thing is that you are very proud you are very proud of your power and position you will lose your power you will lose your position this is the reason why ravana was able to defeat indra because of gautama rishi shap this all happened much much before so he said that you will be defeated you will lose your position you lose your power because power and position make people think like this sometimes you know recently in the during election some politicians family some son a scandal came out so misbehavior with some women and all why do people behave like this because they think i am i am rich and powerful i am influential and I, i think i can do anything so you are thinking like that i am indra i am head of the swarga i i got power i can approach any woman i can transgress anything so i curse you that you lose that power you lose your position so gautam rishi gave second curse like this third curse he gave whenever anybody any man or any woman does this kind of illicit affair 50% of that papa karma will come to you because you are suppose you are a responsible man you are supposed to behave responsibly so you are irresponsibly behaving setting an example wrong example to people so if anyone performs any illicit affair 50% of that will come to you these are the three curse that gautama rishi gave and what is this especially the third one it is mentioned in the scripture if if a man transgresses with an another woman who is not your wife or a wife transgresses her dharma with another man who is not her husband the what is the amount of punishment if this kind of an incident happens in kaliyuga what is the duration of kaliyuga 4 lakh 32000 years so you have to be in a hell for 4 lakh 32000 years in whichever yuga you do illicit affair what is the duration of that yuga that amount of time you have to suffer in the hell so now if indra has to get 50% and if there are lakhs and tau, you know millions of people do all these things imagine how much papa karma indra has to get so gautam rishi is giving such a serious curse to indra and then he also gautam rishi understood it is not only indra who has done mistake it is not only just indra who has done mistake even my wife ahalya also has done mistake 
सो ही टर्न टूवर्ड्स अहल्या एंड कर्स्ड हर आल्सो तथा शब्दा सवई शक्रम अहल्या मपि शब्दवान अहल्या मपि शब्दवान इवन अहल्या आल्सो ही गेव कर्स इह वर्ष सहस्राणि बहूनि त्वम निवस्थ्यसि ही सेड बहूनि सहस्राणि many 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 thousands of years you will suffer in this place in this ashram you will you will live a life like stone you live like stone your heart you see the gautama rishi cursed that out of kama lust you have broken the this uh, dharma pativrata dharma that means you did not think how will another person feel if i transgress like this that means your heart has become like stone stone means what no it is not soft it is insensitive it doesn't has those uh, you know sensitive feelings it has lost all that so kama makes our heart like stone prema makes our heart like flower as soft komala so he said that you out of kama that oh indra has come for me all the way so special so out of that kama kama you made your heart like stone and you mixed with him so you become like stone bahuni sahasrani bahuni many many sahasrani thousands of years you will be here suffering vayu bhakshya you will only your food will be vayu you will only breathe you cannot eat you cannot eat vayu bhakshya nirahara this is a punishment what is a punishment nirahara vayu bhakshya for how many days for thousands and thousands of years tapyanti tapyanti in the sun harsh sun summer or day and night tapyanti will be getting burned in this uh, this one bhasma shaini in this this bhasma in this place you will be there adrishya you will not be visible to anyone because if you become visible to someone someone will feel oh oh, oh she is going through some problem let me help her you will suffer in such a way that you can't receive help from anyone adrishya you are hiding and doing this no with devraj indra so adrishya now you will you will become invisible when you are suffering adrishya and then gautama rishi says adrishya sarva bhutanam ashramesmi vatsyasi in this place same ashram adrishya sarva bhutanam you will be invisible to everyone vayu bhakshya only breathe you cannot eat food nirahara you cannot eat food tapyanti you will be suffering and live like stone you will be simply lying in one place like stone suffering and suffering and suffering this will be a curse this is the punishment for what you have done so this is what the place and gautama rishi said that uh, he gave this curse so vishwamitra told this my dear ram that is why this place this ashram this is where all this incident happened thousands of years back where gautama rishi was there ahalya devi was there their son shatananda rishi was there it was a very beautiful great place where brahma was coming to visit this place devatas were coming and visiting this place this was the most happening place but because of this incident this place has become deserted no one comes here and then vishwamitra continued the when the shop was given ahalya immediately realized her mistake ahalya realized her mistake that is why again we are to remember her name is ahalya ahalya means not only good looking but good qualities which is which are natural to her naturally she is a good woman naturally you have those good qualities but under the influence of certain dosha she came under that weakness and she committed mistake she she committed mistake but that is not her swabhava that is not who she is she is not a lusty woman she is not somebody 
who is thinking and making plan or with with uh, which man i will go and mix with him or another one man i i need that is not who she is she is very committed to her husband gautam arishi she is very devoted she is very loyal she is a very good woman that is why her name is ahalya but she committed mistake coming under the influence of certain dosha the moment when she realized it is a mistake and that has hurt gautama her husband she recognized that her is a mistake she begged forgiveness from her husband gautama rishi she did not argue she did not quarrel with him she did not try to defend herself no 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 in this way i didn't know it is devendra only it you know no no such uh, such explanation uh, reason nothing she just remained silent she fell at the feet of gautam arishi she acknowledged her mistake that is why she is called ahalya good quality see here what are we learning lesson you are a good person but you may do mistake you are a good person your good qualities but you can come under the influence and you may do mistake but after the mistake she did not to bargain with her husband why are you giving me such a serious punishment reduce it <clears throat> no i have done mistake whatever i deserve to go through i will go through no need to compromise anything i will whole heartedly go through this punishment i accept this punishment i acknowledge my mistake see this and then she begged forgiveness she fell at the feet of gautam rishi she said i am sorry please forgive me please tell me how do i come out of this and then gautam rishi said he immediately the moment gautam rishi he saw his wife ahalya she has realized her mistake she has realized her mistake this is a very important many people do mistake but they do not realize their mistake number one some people even if they realize mistake they will not accept their mistake and third one is they will not agree for reformation or punishment and the fourth one is they will quarrel they will argue they will defend they will simply waste everybody's time telling that how they are still correct none of these things ahalya devi did she agreed yes i have done mistake she did not quarrel she did not argue she did not bargain she said this is the mistake this is the punishment yes i will go through it and the moment gautam arishi saw that my wife she has now she has realized it she does not want to continue this mistake she is not thinking in her mind once again i want this devraj indra she is not thinking no no one more devata if i get a chance i will mix no she realized it is a mistake so immediately gautam arishi also accepted her back you see this is the most important lesson that we learn from valmiki ramayana when there are such issues in family a husband may do mistake a woman do women may do mistake what is the solution what is the solution that ramayana is teaching did they did they separate from each other no they did not separate even after such a great mistake the gautama rishi immediately accepted her back he said okay you realized your mistake you will be you will still be my wife he doesn't talk to her in a bad way he talks to her in a very nice way bhadram te o oh, o oh, badre o oh, auspicious one o oh, good woman ahalya why because she has now realized that that's all over that is the most important thing but at the same time i have just realized my mistake is not enough she is also agreeing to go through that reformation the reformation she is agreeing to go simply you know words is hey i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm sorry it's not the word. simply some sorry sorry uh, thing the 
the seriousness of her refer the that uh, that she is agreeing is that she is saying i'll go through whatever curse you have given right so gautama rishi accepted her then she asked how do i actually purify myself how do i again become qualified to be with you the way i was earlier then gautama rishi says in the future in the future in the ikshvaku dynasty the supreme lord narayana will come as lord ram and he will come walking around everywhere and when he comes when he sees you and when you see him he will liberate you from this papa that you have accumulated this gautama rishi had told thousands of years back bahuni sahasrani so lord ram will come only he can purify you till then you will be going through atonement you will be going through that repentance paschata for the mistake that you have done and once you are reformed once you are purified i will again come back and again both of us will continue to do our life together doing tapasya doing dharma everything so in this way gautama rishi uh, left ahalya in that place he went again to another place to do tapasya so this vishwamitra telling all these things to lord shri ram lord shri ram is supposed to come he has come after thousands of years bahuni sahasrani ahalya has been waiting for lord shri ram for thousands of years repenting going through that paschata of her mistake waiting for opportunity to purify by coming in contact with shri ram now she has become like stone living like stone adrishya sarva bhuta nam invisible to everyone nirahara vayu bhakshya right so so much of pain she is going through waiting for an opportunity of reformation so vishwamitra tells all these things to lord ram so what did lord ram do after hearing all these things what was his response because lord ram is dharmatma what he does will establish dharma it will set precedence in the future people will follow that so did ram forgive ahalya did he liberate her from did did he do shapa vimochan of ahalya if he does how did he do that and after they they did shapa vimochana did gautam come back all this information we will discuss in our next session We'll stop here. Shri Valmiki Ramayana ki, Jagat Guru Shri Lal Prabhupada ki.